Alongside the X-Wing, the TIE Fighter is probably the most iconic fighter craft in Star Wars. The standard TIE, otherwise known as the TIE Line Starfighter, was manufactured on a mass scale, with some estimates putting the total number at 4.6 million. Being an acronym for Twin Ion Engine, the TIE Fighter was equipped with a surprisingly decent engine with no moving parts, meaning it was quick, maneuverable and low maintenance, especially when compared to its very cheap cost. Its armaments weren't bad either. Equipped with a pair of LS-1 laser cannons, these weapons were relatively powerful, using the more potent green form of blaster gas which was common within the Empire's armaments. But despite these advantages, the standard TIE lacked a hyperdrive, any kind of life support system and was frequently bested by the Rebels' X-Wings. In response, the Empire developed numerous variants of the TIE Fighter, each performing specialised roles in an effort to diminish the Rebels' advantage. In today's video, we will discuss every single TIE Fighter made by the Empire, as well as some of the upgraded designs made by its allies such as the Chiss and the Imperial Remnant. But before we start, I'd like to thank Tom Riddle for suggesting this video. Your name will be entered into the Dooku Sabre giveaway. Be sure to subscribe and comment your lore questions, what ifs, etc. for a chance to win this awesome Sabre. Before delving into the various space-based TIE Fighter variants, it's worth exploring some of the more unique adaptations. One such variant, the TIE Mauler, served as a light Imperial ground assault vehicle. Like its space-based counterpart, the Mauler was designed for speed over armour, resulting in a lightly armoured frame. It was outfitted with three laser cannons, providing a respectable offensive capability for its size. Additionally, the Mauler featured an enhanced self-destruct mechanism, a last resort feature ensuring that it wouldn't fall into enemy hands. Another similar variant was the TIE Crawler, also known as the Sentry Tank. This ground vehicle could reach speeds of up to 90 km per hour and was powered by twin power generators. The TIE Crawler was armed with a pair of medium blaster cannons mounted in the chin positions, akin to those on the standard TIE Fighter cockpits. Additionally, it featured a retractable light turbo laser beneath the cockpit ball, significantly enhancing its firepower and enabling the crawler to engage with more heavily fortified targets. Another bizarre variant was the TIE Subfighter, a submersible attack craft tailored for aquatic environments. Armed with a concussion missile launcher and a single blaster cannon, the Subfighter could venture to the deepest of oceans. Similarly, the TIE Fighter boat was also designed for aquatic environments and was able to operate both underwater and on the surface of the water. With these land and sea based TIE Fighters out of the way, we will now turn our attention to the space based TIE Fighter variants. First, we have the TIE Stealth. This model was distinguished by its incorporation of a secondary propulsion system, consisting of a smaller, lower mission engine designed to minimize energy signatures. Additionally, the TIE Stealth was coated with a sensor dampening material, further reducing its detectability. However, the TIE Stealth Fighter was not the best TIE Fighter designed for covert missions. The TIE Phantom, also known as the Phantom V38, emerged as a cutting edge prototype within the TIE series lineup, showcasing several advanced features that set it apart from its predecessors. Among its notable attributes were the inclusion of a deflect shield and a hyperdrive. However, the most remarkable feature of the TIE Phantom was its incorporation of a Stygium cloaking device, a technology that had not been seen for decades and possessed the capability to render the craft completely invisible to the naked eye and advanced sensors alike. The use of Stygium crystals, as detailed in our exploration of lightsaber crystal types, was pivotal in achieving this level of invisibility. These crystals were so effective at cloaking that the Galactic Republic had previously banned their use due to the tactical advantage they provided. Yet, despite these advantages, the cloaking device came with significant drawbacks. Its high power requirements necessitated the deactivation of other critical systems when in use, including the fighter's speed. Additionally, the hyperdrive, sensors, communication systems and weapons were all rendered inactive during the operation of the cloaking device. Because of this, as well as their high expense, not many TIE Phantoms were ever produced. Next, we have the TIE Advance 1, often referred to as the TIE Interceptor prototype, a craft that represented a significant leap in Starfighter technology. This fighter was initially tested by Darth Vader as a potential successor to the standard TIE Fighter. 
Despite its failure to reach mass production, the prototype's superior design elements were later integrated into subsequent models such as the TIE Bomber and the TIE Interceptor. The TIE Advance 1 maintained the core components of its predecessors, but introduced a novel space frame. This included an elongated rear deck and a reinforced durasteel alloy hull, enhancing its durability. A key innovation of the TIE Advanced was its bent wing solo array wings, akin to those on the TIE Bomber, offering both an increased power generating surface area and a reduced profile compared to the regular TIE Fighter. While the TIE Advance was equipped with a modest Class 4 hyperdrive, it still lacked life support systems, requiring pilots to wear fully pressurized flight suits. Two derivatives of the TIE Advance were developed, the TIE Aggressor and the TIE Sentinel. These variants, serving as multi-role Starfighter Strike fighters, were designed to fulfill hybrid fighter-bomber roles. The most notable modification in these models was the addition of a laser cannon turret positioned on the top back of the craft offering defensive capabilities against pursuing enemies. The TIE Avenger represented the zenith of the Imperial Starfighter design evolution that began with Darth Vader's TIE Advance 1. The TIE Avenger boasted a formidable primary weapon system, consisting of four laser cannons strategically mounted on the front tips of its solar arrays for maximum offensive reach and precision. Complementing its laser armament, the Avenger was equipped with general purpose warhead launchers, with a magazine capacity of four concussion missiles each, these launchers could be loaded with three proton torpedoes, two heavy rockets, or one space bomb. An innovative feature introduced with the TIE Avenger was the optional tractor beam system. This technology was a game changer in dogfights, enabling Imperial pilots to ensnare enemy fighters in a tractor beam, temporarily immobilizing them and preventing any attempt to evade the Avenger's lethal firing arc. Next, we have one of the most iconic TIE Fighters. In response to the notable shortcomings of the standard TIE Fighter against the Rebel Alliance's X-Wing, the Galactic Empire undertook a strategic shift towards enhancing its fleet's capabilities. Recognizing the X-Wing's superiority, the Empire developed the Interceptor variant within the TIE series, specifically designed to counter the agile and well-armed Rebel Starfighters. This new model featured several key designs and technological advancements, aimed at improving its combat effectiveness. The TIE Interceptor's solar collector panels were redesigned, made longer and angled to refine the fighter's overall profile. This adjustment not only augmented its speed and energy efficiency, but also made it a more elusive target, complicating the task for enemy gunners attempting to lock onto the craft. Technological enhancements were also central to the TIE Interceptor's development, notably the integration of a new targeting software and computer. This state-of-the-art system provided the Interceptor with greater accuracy during high-speed maneuvers and complex dogfighting sequences, giving Imperial pilots a significant advantage in battle. Next, we have a personal favourite of mine, the Emperor's Royal Guard's TIE Interceptor. This variant of the Interceptor underwent personal oversight and design modifications by none other than Darth Vader himself. As you might expect, the Royal Guard TIE Interceptor was very advanced, incorporating a built-in hyperdrive and shield generator, a stark contrast to the original TIE Fighter or the original TIE Interceptor. These upgrades ensured the fighter boasted not only remarkable speed, but also superior maneuverability that surpassed its counterparts. Moreover, these specialized interceptors were occasionally subject to additional enhancements. This included more lethal weaponry, cutting-edge shielding technologies, and on rare occasions, ordnance launchers. In another attempt to counter the Rebel Alliance's X-Wing, the Galactic Empire developed the TIE Hunter Multi-Role Starfighter. The TIE Hunter, reserved exclusively for elite Storm Commandos, incorporated features previously unseen in the Empire's fleet to directly challenge the X-Wing's dominance. Mirroring the X-Wing's design, the TIE Hunter was equipped with S-4s that would spread open in attack mode for enhanced weapon capabilities and aerodynamic performance. A notable departure from traditional TIE Fighter models, the TIE Hunter came equipped with both a hyperdrive and shield generators, effectively granting it unlimited operational range and enhanced survivability in the face of Rebel firepower. Furthermore, it earned the distinction of being the fastest TIE variant within the Imperial fleet outmaneuvering and outlasting even the Rebel Alliance's X-Wing in dogfights and strategic engagements. Next, we have the TIE Oppressor. 
engineered to function as a light bomber with the maneuverability of a fighter. It drew parallels with the Rebels Y-Wing Starfighter, a versatile craft known for its balance between offensive capability and agility. Although primarily tasked with engaging enemy capital ships, the tire presser's design did not limit it to this role alone. Its considerable missile capability and the option to be armed with anti-starfighter ordnance made it a formidable opponent against enemy fighters. The craft's adaptability was further enhanced by the inclusion of powerful engines and boosters, granting it speeds that could rival and in some cases surpass those of the more agile starfighters it was designed to counter. Another multi-purpose TIE fighter was the TIE Defender. Its inception was driven by Grand Admiral Thrawn's initiative to enhance the Empire's aerial capabilities in response to the escalating rebel threat. This initiative found high-level endorsement from both Grand Moff Tarkin and Emperor Palpatine himself. Distinguished from its predecessors, the TIE Defender was equipped with deflector shields and hyperdrive. Its propulsion was provided by a superior twin-iron engine granting its speeds to outpace Y-Wing starfighters with ease. Armaments were also significantly upgraded to include six laser cannons, iron torpedoes and concussion missiles, making the Defender a formidable adversary capable of inflicting high damage. The development of the TIE Defender did not stop with its initial model. An even more advanced variant, the TIE Defender Elite, was later produced. This variant boasted enhancement in speed and maneuverability, far surpassing those of its earlier prototype. Additionally, the Defender Elite featured stronger shields, an improved hyperdrive system, and was also equipped with six wing-mounted missiles, thus elevating both its offensive and defensive capabilities. Next, we have the Scimitar Salt Bomber. Characterized by its elongated body, the Scimitar featured a uniquely designed forward module that housed both the pilot and gunner, capable of ejecting as an escape pod in an emergency. Its arsenal was also formidable, equipped with two laser cannons, concussion missile launchers, and deployment chutes for both thermal detonators and proton grenades. However, it wasn't really a TIE fighter. The Scimitar was powered by a single iron engine, hence why it wasn't called a TIE fighter. Next, we have the TIE Fire Control, a very specialized variant within the TIE fighter lineage. This model was characterized by its unique armament configuration, featuring a single laser cannon. The second laser cannon was replaced by an array of sophisticated sensors. The primary mission of the TIE Fire Control was reconnaissance. It was adept at scanning enemy bases and relaying critical data back to the Imperial fleet. Often operating in tandem with the TIE Fire Control was the TIE Ground Targeting Starfighter. The TIE Ground Targeting Fighter was equipped with a lone laser cannon and a concussion missile launcher which boasted a modular design to accommodate a wide range of mission-specific payloads. Standard armaments for this variant included 12 concussion missiles, although the launcher was versatile enough to be adapted for other specialized loads. However, the evolution of the TIE Fighter eventually led to these two variants becoming obsolete, leading to its replacement by the more renowned TIE Surface Assault Bomber. The Surface Assault Bomber was distinctly designed with dual hulls positioned side by side, the starboard hull was designed for the pilot, while the port hull housed a plethora of general-purpose warhead launchers. This variant was also much bulkier, built to accommodate its enhanced armaments and sophisticated sensor packages. These sensors were specifically tailored to counteract the jamming capabilities of capital ships, ensuring the time bomber could work in most environments. Due to its size and bulkiness, the TIE Surface Assault Bomber was less maneuverable than its fighter counterparts, but made up for it with its formidable payload. Capable of carrying up to 15 metric tons of explosives, the Surface Assault Bomber's arsenal could include a variety of munitions targeted to specific mission requirements. This bomber craft, though, would again experience an upgrade. The TIE Heavy Bomber represented a significant enhancement over its predecessor. This modified version was distinguished by its incorporation of dual-weapon pods. This adaptation effectively doubled its ordnance capacity, enabling it to carry significantly larger payloads during combat operations. The TIE Interdict Starfighter, otherwise known as the TIE Punisher, stands as another formidable variant in the extensive lineup of TIE bombers. During design parallels with the TIE Heavy Bomber, the TIE Interdictor featured wings and a command module that closely resembled those of its predecessors. However, it distinguished itself through the addition of a pair of ordnance pods on either side of the command module, totaling four pods which significantly enhanced its payload capacity. 
to accommodate the increased demand for precision and durability given its expanded arsenal. The TIE interdictor was also outfitted with advanced sensors and shielding systems. The versatility of the TIE interdictor's armaments was further evidenced by its capacity to be equipped with a wide range of advanced munitions. These included plasma torpedoes, advanced homing missiles, cluster mines, and iron bombs. Next, we will discuss some of the transports of TIE fighters. The TIE VIP shuttle was one such example, it being a notable iteration of the classic TIE bomber framework. This variant modified the standard bomber design to accommodate up to four passengers alongside additional cargo space. But despite its practicality and low cost, the VIP shuttle did not enjoy popularity among its intended user base. Moffs and officers showed a distinct preference for the more luxurious and spacious Lambda-class shuttle. The TIE boarding shuttle was another transport-based variant. This was another variation of the TIE bomber, tailored specifically for boarding operations and the transport of troops. This variant featured a notably enlarged hollow secondary pod equipped with clamps and hole cutters, tools essential for breaching the hulls of enemy vessels to facilitate boarding action. A further evolution of this design concept was realized in the TIE lander, a vessel that essentially served as an upscale version of the TIE boarding shuttle. The TIE lander boasted a triple hull design, significantly increasing its capacity to accommodate an entire company of stormtroopers. Next, we have the Lancet Aerial Artillery, a variant that ingeniously combined elements of the TIE series and the Lambda-class shuttle lineage. This hybrid integrated the dual cylindrical pods of the TIE bomber with the Lambda-class shuttle's recognizable flat-bodied tri-wing structure. At the front of the ship, the Lancet boasted a centrally mounted proton beam cannon, precisely angled for effective air-to-ground assaults, enabling it to unleash focused and devastating attacks on terrestrial targets. Additionally, the Lancet was outfitted with two anti-air systems. This ensured that the Lancet not only served as a potent force in ground defensive operations, but also remained safeguarded from enemy fighters. Next, we'll move on to some of the more experimental variants. The first of these was the TIE prototype. In the early days of the Galactic Empire, an unnamed TIE fighter prototype was developed, an endeavor marking the Empire's early foray into expanding its fleet capability. The ambitious design of this prototype was marred by significant flaws, leading to its eventual failure. Chief among these was its problematic ejection system, which proved to be not just ineffective, but outright dangerous. The system was plagued with inconsistencies. In some instances, the catapult mechanism responsible for ejecting the pilot would malfunction dramatically, resulting in explosions that would vaporize the pilot. Another experimental TIE fighter was the TIE Experimental M1, often referred to unofficially as the TIE Bizarro. This model was very distinct, featuring only one standard TIE fighter wing panel which was supported by two wing braces and linked to dual cockpit pods typical of the TIE series. The left pod was dedicated to flight control systems, while the right pod was outfitted with a turbo laser significantly more potent than the laser cannons found on earlier TIE models. However, the performance of these fighters was somewhat disappointing. During a confrontation with some A-Wings, many of these fighters were destroyed, with the A-Wings suffering no losses. The TIE Experimental M2, dubbed the TIE Big Gun, marked another innovative venture within the TIE series. Like the M1, the M2 diverged from traditional designs. It retained the basic frame of the TIE fighter, however, it underwent a significant modification. The customary chin-mounted laser cannons were replaced with a set of formidable turbo laser turrets, affixed to the external wing hubs. In terms of speed, the M1 matched the standard TIE fighter, though it experienced a slight decrease in maneuverability. This model shared a common feature with its fellow TIE experimental counterparts, being remotely piloted from a modified Beta-class escort transport. This innovation allowed for strategic flexibility and reduced the risk to Imperial pilots. The TIE Experimental M3, referred to as the TIE Warhead, was another pioneering design. This model was a modified version of the TIE Interceptor, with the notable alteration of replacing its original laser cannons with a duo of warhead launchers situated on the external wing hubs. Like the M1 and the M2, the M3 was unmanned. Additionally, most M3s were equipped with shield generators, a modification that surprisingly did not impact their performance adversely. 
This batch of experimental TIE fighters proved to be more effective than its predecessors. In a notable engagement, TIE Experimental M3 units managed to severely hamper an X-Wing squadron, showcasing their enhanced defensive capabilities and strategic value in combat. The TIE Experimental M4, known colloquially as the TIE Bomb, leveraged TIE series technology to create a guided missile aimed at capital ship and space station destruction. This iteration of the TIE Fighter drew heavily from the TIE Bomber in terms of its wing panels and adopted a central pod and wing strut configuration similar to its predecessor. However, the TIE M4 distinguished itself by being laden with explosives potent enough to achieve an explosive yield five times greater than that of a TIE Starfighter on a kamikaze mission. Engineered with an augmented booster system to complement the standard twin iron engine, the TIE Bomb boasted superior linear acceleration, surpassing even that of the TIE Defender. As one might expect for this kamikaze variant, it was designed exclusively for offensive operations and was not equipped with any defensive armaments, with its singular purpose being to deliver devastating blows to enemy capital assets. The final experimental TIE design was the M5, also known as the TIE Booster. At its core, the M5 maintained the design essence of the standard TIE Fighter. However, it underwent a significant transformation with the integration of a large booster engine affixed to the fighter's aft section. This enhancement propelled the M5 to speeds well beyond those of the traditional TIE, albeit to slight compromise to its maneuverability. The M5 was outfitted with both a hyperdrive and a shield generator. These features granted the M5 strategic flexibility and the ability to execute rapid deployments before retreating across interstellar distances. Next, we have another TIE Fighter variant whose name is not known. This variant was deployed in a highly classified operation orchestrated by Darth Vader, aimed at reigning in his rogue apprentice, the clone of Galen Marek. Its primary armament consisted of iron cannons, indicating a strategic preference for disabling targets rather than outright destroying them. Another notable innovation in its design was the inclusion of two large projectile launchers housed within the port side pods. These launchers were designed to deploy a unique type of boarding pod. They were capable of delivering paratroopers or battle droids directly into the heart of enemy vessels or installations, further allowing these kinds of vessels to capture the Empire's enemies alive. We will now turn to some of the TIE fighters created by other factions other than the Empire, including the Chiss and the Imperial Remnant. The TIE Automated Fighter, also known as the Droid TIE Fighter, was a significant addition to the Imperial fleet during the resurgence of Emperor Palpatine and his campaigns against the New Republic in 10 ABY. At the heart of its automation was a droid brain, eliminating the need for a living pilot. This 10 kilogram droid brain was not utilized to minimize human casualties. Palpatine really did not value those under his command. Instead, it was meant to allow for increased shielding through reduced weight. The automated TIE Fighter was enhanced with additional armor plating and featured rectangular wing panels with adjustable pitch, a design tweak that contributed to its superior performance. These modifications not only increased its durability, but allowed it to surpass the atmospheric speed of the TIE Interceptor, making it a swift, small and highly expendable unit on the battlefield. The TIE Raptor, a smaller and unofficial variant of the classic TIE Fighter, was developed after the Battle of Endor specifically for the Warlord Jin. This model maintained the iconic spherical cockpit, but swapped traditional wings for four short fins, enhancing maneuverability to match an A-wing's agility. Despite being slower than a TIE Interceptor, the Raptor was heavily armed with four laser cannons and two concussion missile tubes, with select prototypes also featuring shields. Many years after the fall of Emperor Palpatine, around 130 ABY, the New Galactic Empire introduced two advanced starfighters to its fleet, showcasing significant technological advancements from their predecessors. The first of these was the TIE Predator. Regarded as the modern successor to the TIE Interceptor, the TIE Predator retained the hallmark agility and heavy armament of its forebear, but introduced key enhancements that addressed the limitations of earlier TIE models. Notably, the Predator was equipped with both a hyperdrive and a deflector shield. The deflector shield was ingeniously integrated into the fighter's blade-shaped wings, thus increasing its protection. Drawing on the designs of the Predator-class fighter, the Neutralizer-class bomber was developed. The Neutralizer was designed with a single pilot in mind, and was armed with two medium laser cannons and a proton torpedo launcher, 
capable of unleashing a payload of 10 proton torpedoes. Additionally, the bomber was outfitted with a Class 1 hyperdrive and a navy computer, making it a very versatile and effective bomber when compared to its predecessors. The Nissus class Crawcraft stands as a testament to the collaborative technological advancements between the Chiss Ascendancy and the Galactic Empire, a union largely orchestrated by Chiss Imperial Officer Thrawn. One of the most notable aspects of the Crawcraft is its hyperspace beacon system. This system allowed for light speed jumps without the need for an onboard navigational computer. By relying on an external beacon for navigation, Crawcrafts can operate as long range vessels whilst also reducing the need for heavy, complex, non-combat equipment. However, this reliance on beacon ships also meant that Clawcraft operations are generally confined within the range of these beacons, a limitation that requires strategic planning and coordination in deployment. And that's all for this video. If you want to learn about every Mandalorian weapon or every super weapon in Star Wars, be sure to check out these videos on screen now.